As much as the maybe approach doesn't change too much uh, in terms of how you, you're shooting in the location that you're shooting in, the, the stakes must change a lot when it comes to a film like Operation Avalanche when you're going from a high school to NASA. Can you talk about, can you talk a little bit about uh, Operation Avalanche? Uh, it has, has not been released yet, so uh, people listening will, will not know the, the premise yet. Um, sure. I mean, Operation Avalanche is, is a very simple story about CIA agents in the 1960s who get sent to NASA to see if there's a Russian spy leaking secrets about the Apollo program, and instead they find out, like, just a crazy huge secret, which is that uh, NASA can't make it to the moon. And they're young guys, and they think that they're going to solve the problem themselves. Um, and that was a challenge because, again, it's trying to be like a fake documentary, and that meant that we needed to shoot with real people in real locations because, obviously, we couldn't afford to build NASA or mission control. And we were, we were lucky in that NASA, I at least their Galveston campus, has not changed anything because it's historical, right? I mean, obviously, it's very important where, they, where mission control sat when they went to the moon. So all that stuff is still there. So that was definitely more complicated from a legal point of view. But fundamentally, the, the, the philosophy is the same. You go to a place with some form of permission, whatever that may be, and then once you're there, you try to stay out of the way as you can, and you film as much of the, of the experience as you can get, and then when you're home, you figure out how to use it. So there, like we were in mission control. I mean, one of the, one of the key scenes of the movie is us debating how to fake the moon landing in actual mission control while there's an entire tour group behind soundproof glass watching us oh taking our gosh. picture and it was it's one of those moments where you're there shooting and you're like gosh this is never going to work like somebody's going to open the door we're going to get thrown out they're going to arrest us or like our embassy is going to have to come save us and and I know that wouldn't have happened. Like, let's say they did catch us. We would just be like, oh, yeah, we're just filming something stupid. Like, don't worry about us. Like, you can actually get quite far on that, on that uh, line of reasoning. But it just had that feeling of a real heist. And like in the dirties, because these characters that, that we make movies about are kind of guys that are really into heists, they're really in, like, they feel like they're in the movies, like that, just them personally, it, it winds up creating a great, it, it's like an electrical environment to, to, to shoot these scenes because it's like not only are we there illegally and talking about all these really illegal things but the, that's what the characters are also experiencing the characters have also snuck into NASA the characters are also trying to create some big massive plot and so of course you can't help but be paranoid and excited and be like oh, are they gonna walk in any minute and so like the the, the resonance is one-to-one -one, right which I think is it's, it's, it's worth its weight in gold. If you can have your characters experiencing the same thing that the actors are going through, then, I mean, you just feel that. And it's a, it's a cheap trick. It costs nothing. Literally, it costs nothing to do that. And um, I think it is kind of the opposite of what traditionally film education tells you to go. They don't tell you to go to that place. They say be prepared. They say to have everything ready. They say, let yourself be surprised, but be surprised within this box. And that's a great model for making more traditional narrative movies. But I think given the limitations that we have in this country uh, in terms of the amount of money we can use, you've got uh, you've to do something new. And to us, that proved to be super fertile ground of, of uh, having resonance between reality and drama because it's just so cool. Like, like, I mean, I can't tell, I mean, I can tell you from experience being in that situation, you could, you can't, you, you can't replicate it. Yeah. The process seems to be the, one of the most exciting parts about it. And if that comes across to the audiences when they're seeing it, that the process is like, I feel like they will recognize that and appreciate the process because um, yeah, the, the excitement there must have and been. And it informs added. content, too, in yeah. some pretty unique ways. Like, you will be shifted by what happens to you. A good example in Avalanche is we're in the photographic. So at the, in Apollo 11, they have this amazing photographic archive run by very smart people. We're back there talking with these people, and they start telling us, well, you know, these photographs were taken on Earth, not on the moon. And this is just a conversation we're having, and they're going on and on <laughs> about where on Earth they were taken, right. what parts of Earth look like the moon, why they look like the moon, how you could fool people. And the conversation is very, like, we're just joking around. Like, they're, they're trying to be friends with us. And for us, because we know our story, is like, oh, my God. Like, this, they, they, this, is, this is now the turning point of the film. Right. Like, we just got the whole middle of our movie based on this random conversation that happened because we were ourselves in this moment. And you can't 
one, you couldn't write to that, and two, it allows the extremely cliched to play as normal, which is something that I find all the time. In the Dirty is a great example, is when I go into City Hall and ask for those blueprints mm -hmm. of the high school and they give them to me. So that's a moment that if it were to happen in a scripted movie, you'd be like, what? This is ridiculous. Like, like I, don't, I don't believe that. But because we do it for real, and because our characters can talk about it happening, all of a sudden the cliched or the, or the ridiculously uh, like rote dramatic awfulness evaporates.